So Cory, can you tell us what is your research about? Uh, so the research that I'm presenting today is about, uh, broadly, it's about the concept of social cohesion and how this has become a policy agenda um, in humanitarian work with refugees broadly, uh, especially since probably since the start of uh, the large numbers of people leaving Syria in 2015. I'm looking at how this is manifesting in uh, humanitarian programs in one specific context, which is the Kakuma refugee camp in northern Kenya. So the, the big picture question that I had going into this was, when they talk about social cohesion programming between refugees and hosts in this refugee camp in Kenya, um, is this something that's a, a result of a global policy trend and they've sort of plugged this generic policy into that place? Or is this actually uh, coming out of local needs um, and an understanding of the local context? And what I found it is, is that there, is, there are sort of two trends that have occurred historically um, when you look at how policies have changed in Kakuma. And, and one is a response to the global policy trend, and the other is actually a response to very, uh, sort of an attunement to the local needs of the host community, and also concerns by UNHCR and other humanitarian organizations um, that the host community presented a threat to their operations because the host community was upset about uh, refugees getting assistance that they were not, despite similar levels of impoverishment. Um, so what I was looking at is uh, sort of where the social cohesion programs came from, but also uh, uh, what, what actually happens in these social cohesion programs, where humanitarian organizations try to bring together refugees and hosts and create positive social interactions. Uh, what I found generally was that some of these programs, such as joint farming schemes, seem to be developing, uh, allowing people to develop positive relationships but not all interactions are necessarily contributing to cohesion. Uh, for example, there were also some cases where cash-based programming was supposed to give opportunities to both refugee and host entrepreneurs, and this was a case where uh, it actually created a lot of tension between the two groups. In some cases, certain people from the host community were uh, getting together and trying to prevent refugees from participating uh, in this program, and that was on the basis that there's sort of one pie of resources that the entre entrepreneurs could be, be benefiting from, so they wanted to cut the refugees out of that. So it created more conflict. Um, and finally, the last point that, that I brought up was that a lot of the social cohesion uh, programs really focus on the relationship between refugees and hosts, um, but one thing they don't pay much attention to is uh, to the degree to which there, these huma the humanitarian economy is actually contributing to rifts within the host community, which is the Turkana community in Kakuma. Um, so some of the recommendations that I would uh, uh, contribute would be to, to think a little bit more rigorously about what kinds of interactions are being fostered in these programs for social cohesion. To think about, um, social cohesion is thrown around quite loosely, so to think about what social cohesion might actually mean in the context of a rural refugee camp, where there isn't a pre-existing society um, that they're trying to maintain coherence for, but rather uh, two different groups. And finally, the, the, these humanitarian programs should think not just about the relationship between refugees and hosts, but also about social cohesion within the host community. Um, and specifically in the case of Turkana, um, how local pastoralists who cannot access all of the livelihood opportunities in the camp that say, educated uh, urban dwellers can, uh, the program should think more about uh, the rift between those urbanites and uh, pastoralists, which the humanitarian economy is contributing to.